Yo, I'm Brian Peake, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at my favorite peripheral picks for 2018. So a few things happen when you start reviewing peripherals. Number one, you amass a pretty good sized collection. Number two, even though a product may initially impress you, sometimes long after the review video is over, you find yourself gravitating back towards some other product in your arsenal or returning to an old favorite. So today I'm gonna wrap up my absolute end all be all desert island list of peripherals. And we're gonna try to check out some Black Friday deals along the way. I'll also load up the description with any last minute deals that didn't make the video, so be sure you check it out. All right, so these are my picks for mouse surface, mouse, keyboard, audio interface, and headphones. Let's go. The mouse surface is up first. Despite owning a ton of different mouse pads and desk mats, I always find myself going back to the Logitech G840 XL. Shocking that it's not all loaded up with RGB, I know, but it's a great size. It's more than enough room for two keyboards, two mice, my headset, and occasionally my coffee mug. In addition to being a fast and accurate surface, it's also really thin at three millimeters, so I never notice it. It also means it settles in really fast, meaning it doesn't look all wavy on your desktop for a week after you unpack it. It just ties everything together, and it doesn't have an extra cable running across my desk, and it doesn't need software or a driver to operate. The size is super generous versus some of the extended mouse pads, which are really just long-ass mouse pads. They don't have enough vertical room. It drives me nuts. This thing is 900 millimeters by 400 millimeters. It's a monster. It generally runs about 50 bucks anywhere you find it. I haven't seen any Black Friday deals on this, but I will keep an eye out. The next up is keyboard. I generally prefer a full-size board as I've just never really got used to the idea of not having a numpad. I use it for productivity stuff a lot, but due to my current setup, I'm currently running two TKL keyboards on my desk. If I had to land on a full-size board, my nod would go to the MK750 from Cooler Master. Its feature set is really stark. It's very minimal, but so is the keyboard itself. The overall design, the overall size of the frame, is really, really minimal, and I love it. It doesn't feel big for a full-size board. The lighting also has a really unique quality versus all the other boards I own. The RGB on it is somehow, like, I don't know, softer. And I like the inclusion of the really nice magnetic wrist rest and the additional purple keycaps. I also dig the fact that it's a standard layout and uses Cherry MX switches, so customizing this board if you want to is super easy. It also doesn't need software. It's not cheap, though, at a usual price of $150. Black Friday deals on Amazon right now, you can get a little bit of a discount on Browns, but if you can handle MX Reds, you can get this thing for under $100 right now. It's a stupid deal for this board. For a TKL board, there's only one that really does it for me because it really does just about everything. This is the Wooting 1 from Wooting Keyboards. This is also soon to be available in a full-size model, the Wooting 2, but I love this board. If I could only have one keyboard, it would be this one. This board can be pretty loud, so mine's fitted with dampeners, and I also have a custom keycap set. These are pudding caps. They're available from Glorious PC Gaming Race. I'll link them in the description. Because of the way the lighting is on this board, where it's like the LED is on the board itself, and the light comes up through the clear stem of the switch, the lighting on this board is just amazing. The magic in this board is that it switches from digital to analog input with the press of a button, which means you can have analog controls via DirectX input for playing like driving games, Games or open world games where you're like running and shooting at one point and then you hop in a vehicle, it makes driving way easier. It stores three analog profiles, one digital profile. You can adjust the actuation point on the switches to fit your needs. You can swap out the switches on the fly and it uses a standard layout and Cherry MX compatible stems. So you can customize this board all you want to. This is my absolute favorite all time keyboard. I always go back to it. It spent the least amount of time in the box than any other keyboard I own. It's also not cheap at about $140 direct from Wooting or Amazon, and I haven't seen any Black Friday deals on this one either, but I will keep my eyes peeled. Mouse, <sighs> this is a tough one. I guess we'll do it like this. I keep two mice on my desk all the time. One of those mice never leaves my desk. I don't think it's left my desk at all since the day I bought it. That's my Logitech Wireless G900. You can still find this mouse, but you'll probably find the newer version, the G903, more readily. It's not cheap, and while it is solid for gaming, it's not my go-to to for that. This is my day-to-day -day all-rounder and my editing mouse. Both the free spin on the mouse wheel and the side-to-side -side scroll on the mouse wheel get used a lot when I'm editing in Premiere. The fact that it's wireless means I can just power it off and set it out of the way when I'm not using it. The wireless is quick and responsive and I've never had a single issue with it. Not one, not lag, not a glitch, not a bug in the software, and it wakes right up when I turn it on to use it. The battery also lasts for like ever too. It's so rare that I have to plug this thing in. The newer G903 that works with the power play mat can be had right now on Amazon for about 115 bucks. As for gaming mouse, this rotates for me. This is a tough call, like really tough. Right now on my desk, I've got the Razer Mamba Wireless. 
I like it, but I'm kind of stuck on wireless right now. Sometimes I use a Final Mouse Ultralight Pro modded with a paracord and hyperglides, but that's not really a realistic, attainable pick, is it? If I had to pick one, it would be the Razer Basilisk. I just love the feel and the feature set of this mouse. Between just the buttery adjustable scroll wheel, the thumb rest, and the different size sniper buttons, this thing just does so much right for me. It literally has not gone back in the box since the day I got it. And I'm not super keen on Razer's Synapse software either, but I tolerate it because the design and functionality of this mouse is so solid. So why don't I just use a G502 if I like this mouse so much? Well, the G502 shares the same scroll wheel as the G900, which means it's either got a clicky, stepped actuation, or it's just got a free spin on it. I love that for editing. I absolutely hate it for gaming. It also feels cluttered with buttons. I don't know, man. In spite of its near legendary status, I've just never been a fan. It's not a popular opinion, I know. The Basilisk is normally about 70 bucks. It'll be about $10 off of that on Amazon for both Black Friday and Cyber Monday. An honorable mention here is the humble and amazing wired Logitech G403. This is the mouse I recommend to just about anybody who asks because it's such a safe recommendation. It's super comfortable for a wide range of hands. It's dead accurate in game for me, and it doesn't really do anything design-wise that would turn anybody off. This is like the Honda Accord of gaming mice. Treat this thing to a paracord mod, some hyperglides, and pull the weight out and you have an amazing FPS mouse, although the mods can be a little pricey. The price fluctuates like crazy for this mouse. I've seen it for as high as $70. I think I paid like $45. Right now for Black Friday, it can be had on Amazon for $35. This is a no-brainer. And I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention the Logitech G Pro Wireless. I can hear it in the comments already. I've never used it. I'm sure it's amazing. Guys I trust absolutely swear by it, but it's $150. My most expensive mouse to this point had been the G900. I paid over $100 for that, so for me personally, I just can't justify the spend. Doesn't look like any Black Friday deals on this one yet either, but if you happen to see one, please let me know in the comments. Maybe I can be persuaded. All right, on to my personal favorite category, audio. Now this next piece is very near and dear to my heart, so much so that I recommend this to just about anyone who spends any amount of time doing any PC gaming whatsoever. This is the Mayflower Arc DAC amp. This is the heart and soul of my audio system, and it gets a lot of work. For starters, it functions as a switch between my PS4, which also lives on my desk that's hooked up via optical, and my gaming PC, which is hooked up via USB. There's just a little switch on the back. I can just reach over and select the source, and I'm good to go. Second, this thing feeds audio from either one of those sources via the RCA lineouts on the back directly to my mixer board. So even if I'm not using the amp portion, I can still use the DAC portion of this to feed some amazing audio to my mixer. Third, when I'm gaming off stream, I can just plug my headset directly into the front of the arc to utilize both the DAC and the amp, and there's a mic input on the front as well. See, the outputs on the rear are auto sensing, so when I plug a headset into the jack on the front, it automatically activates the headset, which means I get to enjoy all that clean power and I don't have to fumble around for a switch or a setting. The DSP bass boost sounds killer. It's not gimmicky, it's really clean, low, amazing. There is no chat mix, there's no simulated 7.1, there's no side tone, there's no EQ, there's no software. It's just sweet, sweet audio and plenty of power to drive whatever you throw at it. This thing is normally too. $249. It's going to be available on Amazon for Black Friday for $229 or directly from Mayflower for $199. Do yourself a favor, don't sleep on this. <laughs> Headphones. I use two sets, one wired and one wireless. Despite reviewing the absolutely exceptional GSP series, both the 500 and the 600, I always find myself going back to my trusty open back Sennheiser Game Ones. For two reasons. One, because they're insanely comfortable. I can literally wear these things all day long. There's no heat buildup, there's no fatigue, there's no adjusting and shifting it around, nothing. They do have a little bit of clamping force right out of the box, but as soon as you get them broke in, they're terrific. The second reason is that these, to me, sound better with the Arc than the GSP 500s do. The GSP 500s sound better with the GSX 1000 if that's the DAC you're using, but I always gravitate back to that combination of the Arc and the Game Ones. They give that insane open back sound stage. The DSP bass boost on the Arc ties right in with these because it fills out that bass that you normally lack in an open back set and I know these cans so well that I can even master audio for my videos with these. For the times that I actually do use the mic it sounds damn good but I hardly ever use it. Now make no mistake I wouldn't be caught dead wearing these outside of my home with this huge microphone on the side but these have left my desk 
only as long as I had the GSP 500 in house and they came back shortly after and they haven't left since. I love these so much, I have a second pair new in box that I still haven't opened just in case something should ever happen to these one day and I can't find them again. These can be had right now for the insanely stupid price of $119 on Amazon. If you don't own these, if you've never tried an open back gaming headset before, buy them. Honorable mention here goes to the HyperX Cloud Alpha for a wired closed back set. If you like closed back, you crave that isolation, that really clean low bass, these get my nod at $100. I've never heard the Sennheiser Game Zeros. They might be stellar, but these have a really fun sound for gaming and easily pull double duty for music and movie watching. You'll be able to find the Alpha discounted at both Best Buy and Amazon for between $70 and $75 over Black Friday. Now the headset you'd have to pry out of my cold, dead hands would be the Arctis Wireless Pro. I gave this headset a glowing review six months ago, and if anything, I love them more now than I did then. They are closed back and super comfortable. I use this headset every day without fail. I game wired to the arc with them. I game wirelessly on the PC with them. I game wirelessly on my couch off the PS4 with them. I chat with my buddies on Discord with them. I pace around my house like a maniac and take conference calls on my phone with them. I hook them up to my phone via Bluetooth and listen to music when I shoot B-roll with them. I take long flights with them. I travel with them. Sometimes I sleep in them. I'm not kidding. I love these cans. I've even had the Astro A50s in house for like the past week doing testing. I will be doing a detailed deep dive head to head comparison between the A50s and the Arctis Wireless Pro. But for me, it's these all day. If I could own only one headset, it would be these. Steel Series, if you're watching, now these are $330. These are not cheap, but they are worth it. I haven't seen any Black Friday deals for these yet, but if you order directly from SteelSeries, they'll throw in an under desk hanger, a hard case, and some additional leather ear cups. Keep your eyes peeled for deals on these. If I see anything at all, I'll put it in the comments and I'll put it out on Twitter. Lastly, I hang both these headsets on the Brainwaves Truss. I've had a few different solutions for an under desk hanger. These things are like military grade and they're wide enough to handle the most ridiculous headphones. Grab one of these on Amazon for $16 and never buy another headset hanger ever again. There's also some great deals out there on gaming monitors right now from Biotech. I've got one on my desk right now for review. I absolutely love it for the money and the Black Friday deals are ridiculous. Ridiculous. And my boy Stinger has put together a pretty solid list of Amazon Black Friday deals for the UK. So if you happen to be overseas and you're watching this, be sure and check the description. Hope everybody has a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time off work. Enjoy your time with your family or your friends or whatever it is you do. And say hi to your mother for me, all right? And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.